in 3, 2, 1, Saubona Bongani. <laughs> so Ubongane, he's the one, he's the founder of this place that is called Winnie Mandela's for the camp. He's the one who took most of unemployed youth to be around here because the unemployed rate is very high. So he's going to take you around and show you the community around here. And then after he's going to take you to one of the family houses, you are welcome to take pictures and also to ask them any questions. Over to you, Bongani. Okay, welcome everyone. Like Kosi said, Bongani, it's a Zulu name. It's very common in South Africa. It simply stands for being grateful, for gratitude. Originally, I'm from Limpopo, that's up north. But at the moment, I'm staying in this community. So I'll show you around. Feel free to make some photographs. You can always ask me some questions. It's a crime-free zone. So I'll walk you through in peace, bring you back to the bus. In peace, not in pieces. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Let's go down. Let's go this way. Okay. Sit in this Okay, I'm coming. I got to look down for real. Yeah. This is not the school, man. No, it's not school. Let me um, check with her when we're going to do that. Bandulu. Okay. Bandulu. Okay. Bandulu. 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 Now, welcome everyone. Now, this community was named after an activist, a social worker by profession, and former wife to the late Mr. Nelson Mandela. Nomzamo Winnie Madikizela Mandela. She's known as Winnie Mandela. The famous and second wife, because Mr. Nelson Mandela was married three times, mm. but not the same time. Mm -hmm. He was not a polygamist. It was one after the other. Polygamy is accepted in our tradition, but not for me, guys. <laughs> one is enough. <laughs> now, we chose the name Nomzamo. That's her African name. Mm. It means someone who is always trying. Plus minus 5,000 people are living out here. We have people from all the nine provinces of South Africa, as well as people from neighboring countries, Mozambique. Zimbabwe, Lesotho, Botswana, and as far as Somalia and Ethiopia. Wow. People are out here to find greener pastures, but it's still very dry. Mm. It's over 40% of unemployment just here. So those who are employed, they work as domestic workers, shopkeepers. They also work in the industrial sector. Their salary is below 3,000 rents per month. That's about 150 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken, mm. monthly. Nothing much can be done because we have to maintain here and back home by the countryside. Within a week, that money is gone. And some people, they go to illegal loan sharks to borrow the money, which mm -hmm. is a problem because you have to pay back the money with interest of up to 50%. If you can't, you're in big trouble. Very, very dangerous, guys. They come for their money, they don't play. And those who are unemployed, they survive through selling different things from fruits and vegetables to jumbo seed. Some of them, they do some recycling. Plastics, papers, bottles, cans. So this is where the lower inhabitants of Soweto are staying because there are three different lifestyles mm -hmm. in Soweto. Mm -hmm. Upper class, middle class, and of course, the lower class right here. Our houses are built from corrugated iron. In winter, it gets very cold. Mm -hmm. Summertime, it's very hot. If it's raining, it's a problem. The roofs are leaking and it's too loud. It's hammering because of the rain and also the mud all over the streets. That is why you see all the carpets. We made a plan to make it more comfortable to walk whenever it's raining. Now, 
people cannot afford to buy new shelters. We call it a shack. To buy a new one this size behind you, that's about three, maybe four meter per side. You can pay close to 4,000 rents, which is expensive. So some people, they get to scrapyards. That's where they collect the material cheaper and they bring everything together to become shelters with the help of the community. It's a very united one. If you don't have the salt, sugar, maybe a tea bag, you can always go to your neighbors and ask for it. If they have, they will share with you. That's how we live. We call it Ubuntu, humanity, working together. You know, A child in a community is raised by everyone. You know, that's how things work out. You know. Now, in a shelter this size, you can find three, maybe four people, even five, and that's where everything happens. Cooking, sleeping, bathing, it happens inside the same room, which means no privacy. Whatever you do, I'm watching you. She's watching me. That is the situation. And you find that it's a family living together. Sometimes it's siblings. It might be friends from the same village coming out here to find greener pastures. When they get here, most of them cannot afford to rent by the middle class and upper class communities. It's very expensive. So this is where they come, where you don't have to pay anything. You just bring all the material that you have. It can be corrugated iron or something else. You identify any vacant space and erect your house. No one is going to ask you any question. But one thing you need to do is to get the address. Or oh, there is the address, number 1007. So you get the address from the committee. The leadership of this community is in a form of a committee, plus minus 10 people elected by the people. So you go to those guys, you get the address with the address, we are actually on a waiting list to receive houses from the government. The project is called RDP, which stands for Reconstruction and Development Program. It's whereby the government is building houses for underprivileged people. People have been waiting for those houses patiently for a very long time. They keep promising, but they take longer before they deliver. The only time they built a couple of houses was before we hosted the 2020 Soccer World Cup. So that's someone has, event. Oh, that's the last time someone got a house was 2010? Ye yes. Before that, it happened before that, before, because we're given the chance to host the event. Now, this is what happened. They started renovating and reconstructing the stadiums, preparing for the big event. So most of the money went to stadiums instead of houses. And that made people very furious. Mm -hmm. So they protested, they barricaded the streets with huge rocks, some government buildings were destroyed just for attention. That's the only language they know. If you keep talking, never act, they won't listen to you. Yes, as soon true. as that happened, the municipality came out here to try and resolve the issue. So they built around 300 houses and families were allocated into those houses according to the address. But after the event, they stopped and disappeared. But we know mm. election time, they'll come back to campaign. They've already started doing that because 2024, we're having big elections. It's national and provincial government, mm. whereby we'll be voting for the president and the premiers of each and every province. So obviously they promise so much, they'll bring some food parcels, some funds and other things, give to the people, more like buying our votes so that we vote for them. And once we have done that, boom, they are out of here. We'll see them in the next five years. It's politics. Yeah. But it's sad. It's sad because people still go out there and vote for the same people because of one reason, the legacy of Mr. Nelson Mandela. Well, he's been there. The whole world used to love him. We loved him, but we can't hold on to him. We need to move forward. We can't, you know, so, yeah. Things have to be changed, you know. Unfortunately, people are not really well informed about politics. Maybe if we can do something, you know, just to try and educate people about the aims, principles, and objectives of different political movements so that people can make the right decisions, they can know who they are voting for and why. So that is the situation at the moment, good people. So I'm going to walk you around because time is jealous, hey? Mm -hmm. Walk you around, show you a couple of things. We will visit one of the houses for the experience. And remember, you're not offending anyone at all. So please come with me. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Mm.